This is a spoiler warning. The following video will contain spoilers for Doctor Who, The Witchfinders. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, go and watch it now, and then come back here later. I've been really looking forward to every episode of this series so far, but as someone who lives and goes to university very close to Pendle Hill, The Witchfinders is an episode that I was really looking forward to. Even though none of it was actually filmed here, it was nevertheless exciting to have a Doctor Who story set so close to where I live, dealing with some local history. This story was also quite close to home in another way, being the only historical story in Series 11 to be set in England. As the final historical story of this series, it's almost inevitable that parallels will be drawn between the Witchfinders and the two stories that preceded it, Rosa and Demons of the Punjab. I'm keen to not judge it in relation to those episodes, but there are some interesting similarities and differences between them that I've noticed. All three stories are grounded in real-life history, perhaps most of all Rosa, which is all about the legacy of one woman, Rosa Parks. Demons of the Punjab also explores the idea of legacy, with Yaz's nanny Umbrun being the common link between the past and the present. In The Witchfinders, however, there is no such link between past and present eras. The Doctor and her friends had to tread softly in Rosa and Demons, as they were dealing with important fixed points in time, but here they're given a bit more free reign. It's only acceptable for the Doctor to try and save Old Mother Twiston at the start of the story, because she's not as significant a figure in the grand scheme of history, like Rosa Parks, or one of the regular's personal histories, like Umbreen was to Yaz. With no fixed point in time that the action's all heading to, I think there's more of a spontaneity to the Witchfinders too. That said, it was pretty obvious that at some point the Doctor would end up being tried as a witch, now that she's a woman. It was the first time since her regeneration that the Doctor found herself in a situation where she was restricted by her new gender. We're so used to the Doctor being the most important person in the room, so it was really interesting to see her as more of a victim in this episode, helpless, powerless and unable to take charge. It certainly helped to bring home the true horror of the witch trials and the dangerous mentality of those who perpetrated them. One scene that stood out to me in particular was the Doctor's plea to King James to let her go, surely one of Jodie's best performances in the role so far. Like the two historicals before it, the Witchfinders used its trip into the past as an opportunity to explore some pretty personal issues, though perhaps to a slightly lesser extent than Rosa and Demons in the Punjab. It didn't have a powerful, hard-hitting final scene or revamped closing credits like those episodes, but then, that's not to say it wasn't as thought-provoking a story. The attitudes towards witches expressed by Becca Savage in King James were shown to be ignorant, selfish and cruel, whilst there were undertones of mob culture in how the villagers followed Becca's influence and were quick to turn on one another. Superstition and religion were also key ideas, with King James using the Bible to justify his wicked behaviour. The episode doesn't spend too long developing these ideas, especially at the end, when the focus shifts to the alien plot, but I like that they touched on them nevertheless. The reveal of the Morax and their plan could very easily have undermined the real-life story of the Pendle Witches, but I didn't feel this to be the case. In fact, I think it complemented the rest of the story rather nicely. The Morax did have their own, admittedly rather generic, plot, but their main job was to facilitate the main plot as the real Witches of the piece. However, the episode was keen to make it clear that they weren't to blame for the witch trials, staying true to history by presenting human characters as the real villains. Ultimately, Becca is responsible for releasing the Morax, and the witch trials are the result of her selfish attempts to conceal what has happened to her. So it's fitting that she becomes the Morax queen at the episode's climax. Cleverly, the episode presents us with an alien menace that cannot exist without taking on human form. A metaphor, I think, for how it's our own kind that we should really be afraid of. For the most part, I thought the Morax and the Mud Witches were brilliant, just the right side of creepy. I can imagine being really freaked out by them if I was watching this episode as a child. It's just a shame that the voice of the Morax was so generic 
and similar to those of previous monsters. Siobhan Fenneran did a great job though, as both alien and human Becker. As the human Becker in particular, she gave a very convincing, nuanced performance, and the twist that she was the real witch was handled well. I've definitely left the best till last this week though. Wasn't Alan Cumming amazing as King James? He really was something else. Utterly compelling to watch and completely in character throughout. Yes, his performance was hammed up and camp for the most part, but he pulled off the graver, more intimate moments just as well, and you could tell that he was having an absolute ball playing the part. I thought King James was written with a great deal of depth too. Unusually for a celebrity historical figure, he's not really presented as a desirable character. He's more of a villain than a hero, exhibiting patronising, pompous and superstitious behaviour. The hints to his homosexuality added an extra layer of complexity to his character, whilst being the source of some of the episode's best jokes. Overall, The Witch Finders rounded off Series 11's trio of historical stories well, exploring the ideas surrounding the Pendle Witch Trials with great sensitivity. It's another story that dealt with some pretty heavy themes and had its fair share of scares, but there was also room for some lighter moments too. The Morax were a creepy, if slightly generic threat, and Alan Cumming was utterly compelling as King James. In my opinion, it was quite an enchanting adventure. And before I draw this video to a close, here are some random thoughts about the episode that I couldn't fit into my main review. You might be wondering why the aliens in this episode were called the Morax, and so was I after watching, so I did a quick Google search to see if the name had any significance outside of the world of Doctor Who. It turns out that the Morax is a mythical figure in demonology, also known as the President of Hell, whilst the name itself seems to stem from the Latin word mora, to delay or to stop. So it's not quite as random as you might first think. I can't be the only one to draw parallels between the Mudwitches and the Hemivores. They're practically identical. I've no idea whether this was intentional or not, but it's a nice touch nevertheless. I love the eerie, autumnal tone they went with for this episode. I thought it really complemented the subject matter of the script. In particular, the shots of dead trees against the bleak landscape were wonderfully evocative, giving the episode an extra layer of atmosphere. Given that the Morax's prison lock also took the form of a tree, these shots could be seen as a clever bit of foreshadowing by director Sally Abrahamian. If one thing's for sure, it's that I'll never look at a dead tree in Lancashire in the same way again, and I see them every day. So that does it for this review. I'd love to know what you thought of The Witch Finders, so please post your thoughts and mini-reviews in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week for my review of It Takes You Away. Yeah.